What's going on everybody, C4, welcome back to the channel, and today we're here for a new Madden 23 rebuild. We're going to go five years, and with a slight caveat here for today's video, we're going to try to bring a Super Bowl to the Detroit Lions, but ever really since that late season push, I mean, who doesn't like Detroit? I think, all, unless you're like a rival, what Detroit had going on this year, you're kind of pulling for them, right? They were, they were very exciting offensively, scored a lot of points, have some exciting playmakers, on both sides of the football, I just, I think the real story here, above all, is the emergence of Jared Goff. Jared Goff, statistically, was like a top five quarterback this year. He's at 27 years old. So the caveat for this rebuild, it's not set in stone. We can abandon ship, if you will, if things aren't turning out the way that we kind of intended them to. But my intention in this rebuild is to like kind of complete a Jared Goff career redemption. We are starting live from the playoffs and going off of what I know about how dev traits and all that stuff worked. Looking at the season stats for Jared Goff this year, sixth in yards, fifth in touchdowns, he should be in line to go up to a star dev. And star dev at 27, obviously you probably only got about three years, three of this five-year rebuild. We're going to have to continue to, to play at a high level for Jared Goff. But he, he played well. For the most part, I, I, I think you can make the argument from an outsider looking in. Maybe I'm wrong, Lions fans. Didn't really feel like Jared Goff won you guys a lot of games. Like, was it Jared Goff completely going off? Or was it more so the offense as a unit was going off? Like, you know, I still don't know if he has all the traits of a true legitimate franchise quarterback. But he has definitely gone from somebody that was a bridge quarterback. A band-aid until they could draft someone to a guy you can legitimately win with. And that's full credit to, uh, I believe, Brian, what's his name? Uh, ben Johnson. That's the uh, the OC, Johnson. Something like that for the Detroit Lions. I need to put a little bit more respect on their name because, hell, if I was looking for a, an offensive head coach right now, let's see, Lions OC. It is a Benjamin David Johnson, not to be confused with the Cardinals running back from back in the day. That guy worked wonders with this offense. Um, I was incredibly frustrated as they, someone that drafted DeAndre Swift with his lack of usage. Uh, but, I mean, the running attack was very good. Amon Ron St. Brown is a monster. You look at the the rest of these weapons. You know, I guess DJ Chark, lightweight speed. But for the most part, especially after they traded TJ Hawkinson, this is an offense that doesn't really have a whole lot of game changers, proven game changers at the skill position spot. And still, they were a very good offense, top five passing offense. So I almost like if you put some more weapons here in Detroit, maybe you got something there. In Jared Goff, so that's kind of what we're going to figure out here. Uh, as it relates to the defensive side of the ball last year, obviously Aiden Hutchinson was an outstanding pick, fell to their lap at the second overall spot. Still very surprised the Jacksonville Jaguars went to Ravon Walker. And that's not just hindsight. That's like, couple, like it was like a 1A, 1B between, you know, if, if you're kind of viewing it that way at worst. And I don't know, man. I, I think Aiden Hutchinson should have just kind of just was the easy pick at first overall. Yeah, the emergence, James Houston, former Florida Gator, transferred to Jackson State. He had seven TFLs, eight sacks. So there's a little bit of a breakout there. So some fun players. Kirby Joseph, the rookie out of Illinois with four interceptions. You had Jeff Akuda, who kind of stayed healthy and, and looks like he might be somewhat of that first round pick that he was a couple years ago. So like, this is a really interesting team. And you know, since that last little playoff push that the Detroit Lions made, in real life, I've just been kind of waiting to make some form of a Detroit Lion rebuild. And I feel like at this time, if we're just going with like, you know, just regular rebuild generated draft classes, why not try and see if Jared Goff can be our guy? Why not? Let's see what we can do. St. Brown, Jameson Williams. Let's get a third wide receiver. Let's get a tight end. You know, on the defensive side, let's maybe rebuild the linebacking core a little bit. Get some uh, outside pass rushers. I don't know if we're going to stay in the 3-4 or whatever we're going to do. But it's going to be a very interesting rebuild. Let's see if Jared Goff has what it takes to complete the career redemption and bring a Super Bowl to the Detroit Lions. For the Madden Pro Bowl, Jared Goff made it as quarterback three. Amon R. St. Brown made it as wide receiver three. If only we would have kept Hawkinson, we would add tight end one. Likely a dev trade gained in that department. Center one, Frank Ragnow. Love seeing that. Penai Suell is right tackle two on the defensive side. Maybe a little surprised that there wasn't enough love shown to Aiden Hutchinson. I think he probably should have made it. But Kirby Joseph makes the Pro Bowl. Like, I'm expecting some 
some big time dev trade increases here before we even get to year one of this rebuild. On top of that, in the NFC, Aiden Hutchinson beat out Tariq Woolen for Defensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, maybe a potential dev trade increase there. That'd be freaking awesome. So to look at our roster now, at season's end, what we got, Jared Goff got the star dev that we were looking for. Uh, Jameson Williams, hidden dev trait, got unveiled as a star, which was kind of expected, I suppose. But, I mean, Goff getting the star, that's really all I was looking for on the offensive side. James uh, Williams, Jamal, went up to a star dev as well. I think he's set to be a free agent. I uh, don't know how our salary cap looks in that department, but we will consider it. On the defensive side of the ball, Aiden Hutchinson is a superstar which is phenomenal. We had a dev trait, maybe gain for Kirby Joseph. Don't 100% recall what his was sitting at, but nothing lost as far as I can tell. So that's a win for the defensive side of the ball. James Houston had a breakout. I, I don't think we can really let him walk even if there's no dev trait there. So we're going to give him a nice little bonus. Uh, Jamal Williams. You know, you like to keep the one-two punch there. I think he's a, definitely a fan favorite, but as it relates to a Madden Rebel, you only really need one running back, and I feel like DeAndre Swift is going to be our guy in that department. Uh, we have Deshaun Elliott here, who's on a start of 26 years old. A really solid player now that he can stay healthy. Struggled staying healthy with the Baltimore Ravens, so we'll give him a brand new contract. I think Mike Hughes with that dev trade. We go three years, bump that up just a little bit. Maybe go three and a half, two and a half, 18 mil over three years. Get him locked in. So we continue to keep these star devs in the secondary. I think we might be able to get an upgrade over DJ Chark on the open market. Oruarie in the secondary. Uh, I do like the idea of a two-year deal, but I don't know if we're going to be able to offer him enough to get him to side because the interest is very low. But he does take it, actually, with the bump up. I, you know, short-term type deal. I have no issues with that whatsoever. So we still got about $40 million bucks. Going to be going into free agency, looking for a tight end, looking for another pass catcher, and some linebackers to reshape our defense. Let's start the offseason. Much as I appreciate what he did for the Philadelphia Eagles, it's pretty much what you have to do when you do a line drill. We got to get rid of Big V's ugly contract off the offensive line. On the other side of Aiden Hutchinson, as we go to a 4 3, which is I'm pretty sure what the Detroit Lions ran predominantly this year, uh, we want to give James Houston more of a shot. Man, this guy has a very high ceiling. So while Aquara is solid, we can just allocate these funds somewhere else and he can go find a better landing spot to get more playing time. And you like having some veteran presence, but not when it's costing you like 10 million bucks. Thank you, Michael Brockers. Better luck somewhere else. For our first three agency, I'm looking for a linebacker. The top linebacker available in a bidding war with the Philadelphia Eagles. Is, I'm going after TJ Edwards. He's 27-84 with that star dev. So obviously, you know, years four and five at 27 are probably not going to be the best. But let's hope he can develop up to like the high 80s so that come the end of that contract, he is going to be, you know, still like, you know, a contributor around the 80s. At the end of this rebuild, I'm going to look at Ben Powers uh, at guard just to come over and see if he can be, and he's already cheaper than what we're paying for Big V, uh, a starter there at right guard on the other side of Jonah Jackson. But the Ravens are very much interested in him. He goes back to the Ravens, so guard becomes a big-time option for us to uh, look at in the draft. TJ Edwards also decides not to join Detroit. Roquan Smith in this world for some reason, even though we started after he got his contract extension, uh, was in free agency. Uh, there was a couple other linebackers that might have been a little interesting here. Uh, you know, Van Rush. And we got Cody Barton. There's seven teams interested in Leighton Van Der Esch. I've signed Cody Barton recently, so let's, let's see. Maybe we get Van Der Esch. On a four-year, we'll bump that up. Now we're almost in desperation, but I just because we're not going to be able to get all of these guys that we need in free agency. We need to get a couple starters here, at least one or two in free agency. And uh, luckily, it will go back to well, get LVE. And I think we're going to have to just have a really good draft. Save our money, let it roll over to next year. Let's go to the draft. We have two first-round picks in this draft. Now, this is the same draft that we would have saw uh, not too long ago as uh, we did a rebuild and it's like you know every time you use the same starting point you get the same draft i actually did not think adrian moore was going to be available i don't know if we can invest a super high pick uh this guy looks like an absolute monster though a release b deeper running six foot four elite strength but i just think for like he looks like a hell of a player but for the nature of our where our roster's at he would be wide receiver three because i'm gonna st brown and jameson williams are clearly one and two firmly put there and my big needs right now i have guard and unfortunately, there's not really any guard prospect that's like, you know, 
we got to reach for them in the first round. Uh, Hennings does look pretty solid if we can get through in the third round. I would say our next biggest need, we're kind of lacking talent at defensive tackle. And looking at the defensive tackles that are available, uh, Luke Edison has fairly good stats. Three Bs, finesse move, power move, and tackle. But this guy looks very good. He is a scheme fit. Terrence Sheffield out of Kansas State, 6'4", 320, eight tackle, three Bs across the board. Uh, and the last piece is tight end. We don't really have a prolific tight end. And there are really three very good looking tight ends. You have Justin Gregory out of Utah. We have Jonathan Elam out of Clemson. And we have Caleb Roll, who's I think is just the best athlete of the three, which could be our tiebreaker uh, with his elite speed, elite acceleration. Four, and I see 4'4", four, four, he looks like he's freaking, um, you know, uh, a Noah Fant type. So right now I'm kind of planning it out. I'll take one of these three tight ends. And I think defensive tackles where we can go land a player. So I think with the first pick, just that we'll go we'll go D tackle. D tackle is a safer first round pick for the optic standpoint. Three Bs, block shed, finesse move, power move. A tackling for Terrence Sheffield here. Elite strength, putting up 42 at the bench. Let's bring him in. Give me a oh no, normal. Whatever, man. Normal dad. We'll go Caleb Roll here. There's no way in a tight end, a prospect that's this athletic, first of the 40, three cone and 20s, not at least going to be bringing in a normal, you know, a normal regular dev trait for an elite athlete, which is at least a hidden dev, which is exactly what we get. 91 acceleration, 88 speed, 6'5 out of LSU. I think Hemmings has to be our next guy. He looks like the best of the bunch for the guards that are available. B awareness, A impact block, which is, you know, those are obviously two on the light end, but B pass block is a scheme fit. For us, we have the third best fit. I would like to see a little bit more of an athlete, but we'll go with the best ratings available. Welcome to Detroit. Hidden Dev, Kendrick Hennings out of Oregon State. Going to be a day one starter uh, taking over for Big V. Didn't really want to use this second second round pick that we had, so we got a great offer from the Rams, a 2-3-6 and six next year. Absolutely. Want to get a little speed at wide receiver, so we have a day three pick here in the third round. Kenny Abulovas, who's... He's fast, so that's why we want to bring him in. And we've also just recently drafted a couple other fast wide receivers from the class. I didn't want to double dip. Take a look at our draft. We did get the little bit of a sting that our first of our first round picks, which is almost a top five, was normal dev. But if I'm going to roll a normal dev, I sure as hell will take a 76 for that starting point. Terrence Sheffield out of Kansas State. I already know there's probably people that have used this draft class. Like, see if I don't do it. I've already fell for this guy with his six stats and no dev. But 76 is still really good. 94 strength. Uh, looks like a pretty good athlete on the inside. He's already the highest rated D tackle we have on the roster. And at least we got our hidden devs a little bit later. Caleb Roll at tight end. 72. Maybe not as high of a rating as I was hoping for. But 72 is still not a bad starting point. And at least he has that dev trade. A great athlete. Uh, headings on the offensive line. Day one starter. Hidden dev. 72 will be playing on X, uh, right alongside Suell. Bulavas pulls a 70. We got a 68. Uh, Johnny Wolf, normal dev linebacker, Waddle, 66 tight end, 64 depth tackle. Hey, we got a 71 kicker. We need a kicker on the roster. I uh, thought actually it was going to be pretty bad when he only popped with 86, 87 kick power. But that 81 accuracy is pretty good for a rookie. All in all, throwing the fact we got Leighton Vander at linebacker. We are a stronger team going into year one of this Detroit Lions rebuild. A nice mentorship situation is Khalif Raymond wants to take Jamison Williams under his wing. So we're going to help on Jamison Williams continue to make him an elite deep threat. Plus two release, plus two deep route running. And fan favorite from Hard Knocks, Malcolm Rodriguez is our training camp standout. Let's just continue to make him an absolute tackle machine. Plus five tackling for him ahead of year one. After a quick offseason, here's the look at our Detroit Lions going into year one of this Reba. We have Goff Swift, Amon Ross St. Brown, Jamison Williams, and I don't really know if I should go Cephas because Cephas Hyde, old school channel legend, or Bulavas, our speedster. I, I think we, I think for the sack that we're going to have St. Brown in the slot, we should just have Bulavas' speed with Jamison Williams. On the offense, big change. We have a brand new right guard in Hennings, the hidden dev rookie, as well as Roll at tight end, who uh, we'll see in just a little bit. He is going to be an absolute monster in this rebuild defensively. Reshape the front a little bit, making sure it's a proper 4-3 from the 3-4. We have Hutchison, McNeil, Sheffield, our first-round pick, and James Houston make up the front. Wolf, a late-round pick, actually gets to start, but I am expecting a lot of nickel with Rodriguez and Van Der Esch primarily on the field. Elliott and Kirby Joseph are our safeties with Akuda, Hughes, and Owarie in the secondary, all with their dev traits. Hopefully, they keep them and maintain it. 
throughout here in year one. Optimism is high. If we can get Jared Goff playing like a top five quarterback again, if this Lions playbook is absolutely cheesy, which I have seen in the sim, let's try and get another dev trade increase for Goff. Get him up to a superstar and not only find the success for Detroit, especially in the postseason, but also, again, a secondary goal, which is a priority, is the career redemption of Jared Goff. Oh, we actually hit on a dev trade in season to Sean Elliott. Our star dev safety pops up to superstar and gets 4K XP. Just about the mid-season point. That's great for the secondary. And we're about mid-season right now. Six and six. Eh, you know, maybe a little bit below where we want to be. But it could be it could be a lot worse. We're coming off a 40 to 21 victory over the Minnesota Vikings. We had an award winner. We're here to talk about some contracts. Mike Hughes, two interceptions, gets defensive player of the week. I wonder actually what kind of devs we're going to be getting. We have a breakout quarterback scenario for Jared Goss. At least that means he's playing very well. And I mean, it's not uh, a shock. I mean, I've seen Jared Goff in the sim while I'm another team kind of just from the outside looking in. See him, you know, uh, he's won MVP a couple times. It's few and far between, but it does happen. So a change for him against the Saints is a big win to go up a dev tree. We also have a breakout here at wide receiver for, I'm going to guess, Jamison Williams. And it is three plus touchdowns or 150 yards, which are a big play player like Williams. He could potentially hit that for sure. But let's take a look at some contracts here at the midway point. Sitting at six and six, still have our eyes on the playoffs with $77 million. We can really keep any and all players that we want. I think Jonah Jackson at guard is a priority for us. So I really, you know, let's get him for the really the remainder of the year. But let's get him for four more years. We'll go five and a half, five and a half on either side, $44 million. And he wants more years, I suppose. And we got DeAndre Swift in the backfield, who we already decided we were going with by letting uh, Jamal Williams hit free agency. We're going to offer him five years, 30, which he accepts. We'll definitely come back to the table. We'll just give Jonah Jackson more years and get that one across the line. Let's sim ahead a week, though, and see if we hit either one of those dev trade scenarios. And unfortunately, we lose a close one, 30-24 against the Saints. I doubt... I mean, we made basically 24 points. So we have enough for Jared Goff to go up a dev trait. And unfortunately, you know, we're going to try to shuffle and deflect some blame off Jared Goff. But he did not play well enough to go up to that superstar dev. We also had the potential breakout for Jamison Williams. And he also did not get this one done. So the only way we can find a silver lining week 14 is to get Jonah Jackson to sign that contract extension. He just wanted more, more years accordingly. So we'll give him five years. And I got it across the line. At the end of year one, we make the playoffs 10 and 7. Did not win the division, but look at this week 18 dump. Almost 50 on the Cowboys. 49-35 with Jared Goff winning offensive player of the week over 400 yards. Four touchdowns outstanding from our quarterback, who unfortunately did not hit his dev in season, but he played very well this year. For the most part, and we're able to punch our ticket. Detroit Lions are in the playoffs. Yes, it does feel weird to say, but they are here. And we have the wild card against Tampa Bay. So that's going to be an interesting matchup. Uh, taking a look at who finished where and what. For our stats, how did we make the playoffs? Well, Jared Goff played pretty much like he did last year. In real life, Jared Goff, I think we were 6th in yards, 5th in touchdowns, or 5th in yards, 6th in touchdowns. And he's right on that line again, except it's just a lot more Madden Simi than it is in real life. With 5,100 yards passing and 40 touchdowns. And I think, actually, honestly, 10 interceptions is the impressive party for Jared Goff, a quarterback that throughout his career has struggled with turnovers. We had 1,100 yards, 15 touchdowns for DeAndre Swift, 12 touchdowns, Jamar Jefferson. Uh, clearly a scheme that can, you know, feed two running backs, even though I like to see maybe a little bit more one-sided for Swift. Uh, on the receiving standpoint, 99 catches, 1,500 yards, 14 touchdowns for St. Brown, 1,300 yards, 10 touchdowns for Jameson Williams, over 1,000 yards for our rookie tight end, Caleb Roll, our first-rounder, and almost 700 yards for our mid-round pick. But look at Caleb Roll. Obviously, I saw this when we were setting up our training for the year. He is X-Factor. An X-Factor tight end. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a draft class that if you use the starting point of the wildcard weekend, every draft class is always this one. So if you are watching this video, and maybe that's how you're starting your own league, if you want a cheesy tight end, Caleb Roll. He's like the last of the three first-rounders. He is superstar X-Factor. That is awesome. That's exactly the kind of weapon we needed, honestly. On the defensive side, we have well over 100 tackles for Rodriguez, Van Der Esch, and Jeff Okuda. Eight sacks from Aiden Hutchinson. Probably 
want to see a little bit more there. 20 TFLs, five and a half sacks from our six overall picks, Terrence Sheffield, which is really good numbers, only three and a half. So we, we, yeah, we got to get more pressure after the quarterback. Five picks, Owuwariye leading the team. Mike Hughes also had three yearly award winners. MVP goes to Josh Allen. Jared Goff coming in at number four. Uh, offense player goes to Cooper Cup. Defense player here goes to Nick Bosa. Offensive rookie there goes to Kemp with Roll coming in at number three. Defensive rookie there goes to Sharp with Sheffield at number three. I actually thought we might have had a chance there. I was really hoping we would roll that because, of course, he was a little bit of a bummer pick. Being a normal dev, that would have been a dev trade increase. Goff was runner-up for top quarterback in the NFL, but I think based off his stats alone, we should be going up a dev trade. If not, it's going to be super annoying to lose it. Lose out on a dev to a goddamn playbook quarterback, but nature of the beast, man. Um... I'm really surprised with the with the kind of year that we had. No, like straight award. I'm a little worried. We might be shortchanged as it relates to Dev Trade. But year one of this five year rebuild in Detroit's already making the playoffs. You got to feel good, almost win, lose, or draw with the direction that this team is going. Unfortunately, that's a little bit of a bummer that we are one and done, losing 35 24. But that's 35 24 to a very experienced playoff team with uh, just a completely cheesy playbook and. And quarterback there, Goff, you know, just couldn't keep up with the OP playbook. He played well, 200 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. But, yeah, we got Mike Evans. This went on to win the Super Bowl, so I guess we lost the Super Bowl change. So our Super Bowl is that Jared Goff has gone up to a superstar dev. Uh, you can definitely tell, you know, getting 17 or needing 17,000 XP to go up an overall point. Might be a little bit of a grind to get that overall, like, up into the 80s and maintain it. Because we're at 29, it's going to probably start to regress sooner than later. But, hey, man, it's at this point, it's about how he's playing in the sim and those abilities that we can potentially start racking up. So that is important. Amon Ross St. Brown is up to an X-Factor. We obviously drafted Roll, who was an X-Factor. Headings was a hidden dev rookie at guard. He pops with a star dev. On the defensive side of the ball, we had Deshaun Elliott go up superstar in season. Our lone free agency signing, Leighton Van Der Esch, was a star. He went up to superstar, so he is thriving in this scheme alongside Rodrigo. And on the defensive side uh, from the rest of the front seven, Sheffield got his dev trait. He was a normal dev, a little bit underwhelming for the number six pick. But finishing his rookie season as a 78 star dev, that looks like a really good first round pick. So we will take that. And leading our team in interceptions with five, Amani Oruwariye has gone up to a superstar dev. Hell of a year for Detroit Lions here in year one. Spend big in this free agency. I'm not going to go out to Nick Bosa, even though this is not a realistic rebuild. And we could. He's just he's just one of those guys. He's a big name that's always there. I want to do something a little more different, something that makes a little bit more storyline and, you know, spicy a little bit. And it's Rashawn Gary, another very popular edge rusher. But the fact that we're trying to poach him away from a divisional rival... The fact that he still is an elite pass rusher, which is what we need. We need to get more sacks. He's going to go on the other side of Aiden Hutchison. He's a Michigan kid. Let's, let's, you know, homegrown in a sense, right? Let's have two Michigan edge rushers, two prolific Michigan edge rushers. Come on. Yes, let's go. And I got a little crazy with the bringing Michigan talent in home. Best wide receiver still available is Donovan Peoples-Jones. We got him actually on a smoking deal to come in and be our wide receiver three. Wolverines, let's go. So at pick 20 in the first round, ooh, there's actually a pretty nice looking quarterback. Our needs, I want an outside linebacker and a defensive tackle. Defensive tackle will be the top priority because the offensive linebacker will be kind of, you know, outside looking in, especially when we're running nickel because it's going to be Van Der Esch and Rodrigo on the field, but uh, Frank Foote, probably the best of the linebackers we did, uh, you know, looks looks pretty solid, to be honest with you. The combine looks, you know, slightly above average, but, uh, you know, that's not, we can wait. We can wait on a linebacker. Defensive tackle, this looks like a pretty good class, and really, our top two targets, first up was Corey Monk at a Tennessee. Now, as someone whose also name is Corey, I hate anybody that spells it with an E, so I think I might have to avoid him just off of that, but uh, he looks like a really good player. Uh, three cone drill was solid bench press. You would like to see maybe a little bit better. Not a great athlete, uh, but the best D tackle prospect I think. I mean Nick Young. Like it, it looks like a pretty strong defensive tackle class, all things considered. But in my opinion, it's a defensive end. That's the best of the bunch. That's why we did our scouting on him. He's six six. He's three oh six. He has first round talent. Double A's and a B. A block set. A tackle. B power move. Finesse move. I mean, I'm not so worried. You're a defensive tackle. You're not really a pass rusher. Elite speed. The bet, you know, 
athletically speaking, not too far off what those D tackles were anyways. He's gonna, he would have been, if he was classified as a defensive tackle, likely would have been like top two, top three in almost all of these testing categories. And I mean, there's something people I, I feel like don't do enough, that if, especially when you need D tackles and generated draft classes have a lot of talent at defensive tackle. Look at the big outside defensive ends for three fours. Those guys can just as easily kick in if you're running a four three to the defensive tackle spot. So Tremaine Ellerby is going to be our first pick and he pops with a hidden dev. And at 6'6", 306, 86 acceleration, 76 speed is absurd, 92 strength. Excited to see what that rating is going to be. The first pick in the second round because we traded out with the Rams and the Rams were god awful. So I think we're going to go with the athlete at corner. Best athlete available. I think when you look at our secondary, Oriari is 28. We got some contracts coming up for, you know, if things get a little dicey. Let's just take a swing at maybe BPA left on our board. Don't want to draft our outside linebacker, at least at this spot. So we're going to look at Lance Green, who's the last of the first round projected corners. Not the speed that we're looking like, even though he has elite acceleration, the broad jump, three cone, all that stuff looks relatively good. And I gas him up for him to be a goddamn normal dev. Well, at least he's not going to be getting on the field right away, so it's not like we have to worry about his dev trait getting regressed, right? Silver lining? I suppose kind of in line with corner. We have Miles Brooks here, left tackle. You know, the tackle airs get up the nades. Decker, maybe we see if we can land his potential replacement here in Miles Brooks, who pops with a dev trait. Great athlete as well at tackle. I wish I had a little more scouting on Huntington. I think it might be time to get our third linebacker here with the first pick. What a trade that was. We basically traded like a mid-second round pick last year. Shit. For the, my controller can't handle it. We traded a mid-second round pick last year for the first pick in the second and third round this year. But again, I, you know, those three A's are, are pretty interesting on Huntington. But the guy that we actually have some information on is Daryl Franks at a Boise State. And you know me, man. You give me an A zone coverage, late linebacker that's a good athlete. And he's pretty damn good. Second in the 40, top five in the three cone 20 year trade. I'm always going to take a swing on him. And uh, dev trait or not, he's probably going to be like, you know, low 70s. The last thing I kind of wanted to check off potentially with the ninth pick in the third round is like, you know, that RB2 got some pretty good reps in our in our scheme. So maybe a better RB2 than what we had. So why not just get the fastest, best athlete at running back in the draft who just so happens to be BPA, dev trait or not. Again, Probably going to be 70s. Ah, screw it. I'm interested. Huntington, we still we have so many picks. Give me a dev trait. Damn it. So take a look at our draft recap. I'm optimistic that while we didn't have a lot of dev traits, we should be pulling a lot of solid ratings, which is exactly what we were able to do. Huntington, 70 normal. Rogers, 71 normal. Frank, 73 normal. That is outstanding rating for a third round pick. Miles Brooks just kind of being the successor to Taylor Decker. 72 with a hidden dev. Lance Green did go net normal, but 75 normal. Very similar to the D-Tack we got last year. Great athlete, 95 acceleration, 91 speed, 91 agility. Zone coverage is pretty good. I think we, you know, not necessarily a scheme fit, but he's not too far off a scheme fit. That's just solid value right there. And the best of the bunch, Tremaine Ellerby. Who we are going to slide right into defensive tackle right now. Let's see if that's just his rating. It might go up. I feel like where he's a little bit on the slower side, he's going to be a lot, you know, perceived as a lot better athlete inside. And it does. He goes up to a 78 hidden dev. Tremaine Ellerby, D tackle to what a monster. Detroit has him in this hyped about their defensive tackle since they had Sue and Nick Fairley. You two Detroit Lions look like a pretty damn good playoff team. We got superstar Jared Goff. Rest of the offense, you know what it is. We're running it back with these studs. And we threw in a little Michigan bias by bringing in DPJ as our wide receiver. Three on the defensive side of the ball. LRB is going to start immediately at D-tackle two alongside Sheffield with Rashawn Gary coming over by free agency. That is a terrifying defensive line. And the addition of Van Der Esch now as a superstar. And Obamarie now as a superstar. I'm expecting this defense to be at least pushing closer to top 10 than what they were last year in the 20s where they finish for their final ranking. And in year two, let's just keep on keeping on. Let's see if we can get Jared Goff another top five season, put him in position to get an X Factor, and make the playoffs. And at our bye week in year two, a very, very competitive NFC North with, you know, seven and five is third. Um, of course, the NFC North features a resurgence as soon as we decide to rebuild a team in the North. But at least we're right where we want to be right in the playoff hunt. I would love to see our pass defense and our defense in general be a little bit better, but at least our passing offense is continuing to crush. 
Let's take a look at some free agents. What are we dealing with? Over $120 million. I take it there's going to be some pretty big contract extensions on the line here. Uh, Oumarie, what's he looking for? Only a one-year deal, honestly, at that age. If he'll take it. I mean, we have so much money. I'll, like, literally double what this base offer is. I'll give him one year, 5.6 mil for a superstar corner. He might lose that depth, but that's that's great at face value right now. We have Amon Ross St. Brown, who is an absolute game changer for this team. We we got to show him the love here as he does not want to resign. For some reason, I don't know why. We're a pass-happy offense. So that's off from five years, $123 million. That is enough to get him to sign the dotted line. We have Taylor Decker on the offensive line. I think this is where we could save a little bit of money because we drafted that hidden dev offensive tackle. And while there's going to be a little bit of a downgrade, uh, that's going to allow us to more so continue the journey of Jared Goff. Which, holy shit, I can't believe I'm even offering this. But this is kind of, you know, the commitment we said we would do. So that's five years, 190. You're going to get better on the open market? Someone's going to give you more than $190 million. Get your head out of your ass. That's unbelievable. We got Jeff Okuda. Let's get him down on a six-year. And again, I, I, I don't know. We, we shot ourselves in the foot with a commitment. I'm going to have to figure out how much money it's going to take to get him to sign. Just straight up offer him, like, just get it over with, rip the bandaid off. A very player-friendly offer to Jared Goff. I literally, like, you guys could see it. Uh, I just made sure I didn't make eye contact with how much money I just paid this guy. Year two for the Detroit Lions, and we get our first NFC North title. 11-6, just beating the Green Bay Packers. Uh, pretty good offense. Top three offense. Top seven rush defense. So at least that department is pretty good uh let's see how do we all finish jared goff he's consistent top five right around that top five. that should be x factor. uh maybe not. the interceptions are kind of high 17 picks might not get that x factor but i will take 5,000 yards and 44 touchdowns every day of the week for our new i i can't even acknowledge how much it was but our new franchise quarterback in jared goff uh thousand yards 13 touchdowns deandre swift we had 87 catches, 1,300 yards, 14 touchdowns for Jamison Williams. His biggest year so far. Might be able to get him off that star dev. Who knows? It'll be close. 13-10 and 10 for Amon Ross St. Brown. Almost 1,200 yards, 13 touchdowns for our X-Factor tight end, Caleb Roll. And Donovan Peoples-Jones was a great role player on the offensive side of the ball. Defensively, both Rodrigo and Van Der Esch go over 100 tackles. We got 16 sacks for Sean Gary, 10.5 from Aiden Hutchinson, 17 TFLs, 6.5 sacks for our first-round pick, Tremaine Ellerby, who pops with a superstar dev. That is an X-Factor in year one, a superstar in year two, just loading this team with talent throughout the draft. Five picks, Jeff Okuda, which justifies the contract extension we gave him for for Deshaun Elliott. Happy, really, with all these numbers across the board. A top five offense in the NFL. Dan Campbell got these guys playing. Uh, MVP race of, for some reason, no Jared Goff. The disrespect. And for the individual awards... Why aren't we winning anything? This is ridiculous! Seems like balling out, we have yet to get like an award winner. An easy dev trait. We've had to grind our way. Last year, we made the playoffs. We were one and done. This year in the playoffs, we're going to say very good Eagles team, but we're an overall point better. They're 85 overall. We're 86 overall. And we do get a victory 23 to 20. Happy to finally get that little bit of playoff success. We are the two seed, so we should be optimistic. We forced three interceptions on something known as Lucas DeMarco. Who got the picks? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess Jeff Okuda and two picks for Rodrigo. I didn't guess it, Rodrigo. I saw that. So two picks, Malcolm Rodriguez on 10 tackles. And our superstar corner, Oruwariye, gets an interception as well. As we are in the divisional round against the sub-500 Carolina Panthers. Please. I don't even want to see that stat line. Fuck off. Sub 8-9, you know, of course the 8-9 team beats us. Those of year two, the Titans went on to beat the Panthers in the Super Bowl 38-21. to But all I really care at this point is where do my dev traits stand as we close out this year? And I, hey, I was worried that Jared Goff wouldn't get that X factor off of those interceptions. 17 picks is usually enough to kind of derail whatever progress you'd have. But this offense is ridiculous. Ben Johnson offense, insane. Jared Goff, career redemption. I mean, at least as far as like a franchise quarterback has been redeemed. He's up to an 80 overall. I guess now we got to go on and win a Super Bowl within the next three seasons. But I couldn't ask for anything better for Goff. Jameson Williams goes from star up to a superstar. 
which looks awesome. Brooks, who's going to be taking over for Decker, is a star. And on the defensive side, our hidden depth deep. He's up to an X Factor. Let's go, Tremaine Ellerby. How did that happen? He didn't even have a crazy year. I'll take it. I'm not even going to complain. Holy shit. Let's go. That's pretty much an X Factor in both drafts. Insane. Uh, Hutchinson's up to an X Factor. Van Der Esch is up to an X Factor. We did lose the dev trade on Oruarie, but I don't. I couldn't give two shits. This is awesome and very much trending in the right direction to win a Super Bowl in the final three years. Say this, knowing that next year's free agency period is going to be kind of expensive, um, like St. Brown and guys like that, I'm not even going to be tempted with the available free agents. We have $70 million, and after paying Jared Goff, I need that to roll over. You know, at some point in this rebuild, we're going to have to pay Amon Ross St. Brown. We're going to have to pay Suell. We're going to have to play Jameson Williams. We're likely going to have to get another contract for Frank Ragnow. On the defensive side, we're going to have to pay Aiden Hutchinson. We're going to have to pay Rodrigo. We're going to have to pay the safety. We've got to pay the rest of the secondary. So I don't even want to be tempted. Our team literally has no holes right now. We could use one more linebacker right there at that right. You know, let's, let's keep all that cap. Let's not fall into any temptation. That's how we ended up spending a decent chunk of money on DPJ. Don't need it. We will, however, pick up the fifth-year option for Aiden Hutchinson this offseason. Jamo 2. I think we found something I, I really, I really like. First, I, we're, we're just, you know, we're looking for a linebacker. So anybody that has a chance at a potential A zone coverage, uh, I'm going to take a bite. Uh, and I can't go all three. So I'm going to take a pick here. I'm going to go Enrique Glenn because we have the A already unveiled. At middle linebacker, we got Patrick Mentor out of Oregon. Has a chance to get the A's. Everyone else is kind of stuck in the B's. But look at what this freak could potentially be. The corners look ridiculous. I'm obviously not going to be in place to get this six foot four corner, Evan Morrison. But you start sniffing around six foot four. You have George Cash, six four, scheme fit, A press, B man, B. I don't. I think that's going to be our first round pick, George Cash, Ohio State, and then grab hopefully one of those other linebackers in the second round so that is exactly what we're going to do first round at pick 26 we're going to defect the, the you know the we need a linebacker because i want this thing i don't know exactly if it's for sure going to be good but i'm like a chick on tinder i see six four i see four three eight i see the best three cone i see one of the best verts this guy is going to be absurd absolutely absurd holy shit Enrique Glenn just went off the board. That was one of the linebackers we scouted. So we, I, I do need to trade up, try to get minor at middle linebacker. And to move up with the Cardinals, I just play it. Screw it. Give me first pick in the second round. They want our second this year, our third next year, and seventh this year. No problem really paying that for the state of our roster. We're only a couple players away. We have a lot of salary cap, which gives us, you know, draft pick versus free agency. We, we're going to have money to be able to spend in free agency. So we're going to be able to get... Uh, Miner, the middle linebacker that I really like the look of. Double B with an A. Not sure what the athletic testing is for sure, but it's pretty his e elite speed. So that is going to be our easy pick. And we got our two guys. The rest of the draft is house money. Moment of truth. Let's look at the draft recap. Maybe first moment of truth. Second moment of truth is going to be what those dev traits are going to be. And uh, yeah, I mean, rest of the draft solid, man. No real brutal picks. Maybe the left tackle here. But Mentor in the second round, trading up for him. He comes 74, hidden dev, 90 speed, 87 acceleration, 81 tackle, 82 hit power, 70 zone coverage, which is pretty good for a rookie linebacker. And he's going to play as the right outside linebacker. But the big get, George Cash, 77 at six foot four, 93 speed, 95 acceleration, 92 agility, 76 man, 76 press. Yeah, monster. So here they for the Detroit Lions, offense remains the same. And on the defensive side of the ball, we are rocking and roll. I'm giving cash. I'm, I'm starting him on the outside right away. I don't know. Maybe that's rushing. I just feel like he's going to be amazing. And we got mentor here on the outside, also getting the start. But this is a dominant team. I almost, 12 wins minimum? We put a year three and we're five and six, which sucks, but also five and six is tied for first in the NFC North. So I'm not going to be too critical, even though we are definitely, you know, playing below the standard that this team should kind of be at. 
Now, here's exactly why we didn't spend any money, because there was going to be some big contracts coming up. I think with cash coming in the draft means we kind of can pick and choose our secondary just a little bit. I honestly think... I don't really want to pay my cues longer than one year. So let's see if we can go like 3.9, 2.5, one year, 6.4. Get him just for one more year and a Band-Aid at the corner spot. We got Rodrigo, who, uh, you know, we, you know, fan favorite. Let's see if we can offer him enough to stay five years, $42.5 million. Get him locked up. Want to see if he can continue to grow and develop. We got Kirby Joseph at safety. Hasn't really had any big years yet, but also pretty good placeholder player like maybe he's just one of those guys doesn't get a lot of interceptions but he makes the defense play better uh so that's kind of the logic you at least think there we just sean elliott who has earned his superstar dev while we've been playing and he actually has failed a dev trade scenario on top of that so he's just a guy that thriving in this scheme so we got him locked up and then you got suel who uh we're just gonna pretty much give him a blank check and say sign and how much we'll pay it we'll do it and we got it Year three, you finish with a winning record. Year three is always weird. Like, it's been, for the most part, four Maddens now. That Like, it's just year three is, if there's going to be a weird year, a year that makes no sense, it's most commonly they're going to be the third year. Nine and eight, not good enough, especially for a team that's 89 overall. And that's, you know, generally something that if you have to give credit to the Madden Sim in Madden 23, when you have a good team, for the most part, some things are just impossible. Comes down to playbooks and all that other stuff. But for the most part, good teams will at least, like, make the playoffs. You don't have a lot of, like, you're a 90 overall and you, you barely go above 500 or whatever. But that's kind of the case that we had here this season. Which, uh, you know, we're probably going to get hit with some depth trait regression. Jared Goff has been playing, like, a top five quarterback. This year he plays, I don't know, maybe it's the age. He still plays pretty well, but wasn't playing, like, a top five. More like a top ten quarterback. And that is way too many interceptions. I'm actually a little worried he might lose his X factor this year. 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns, DeAndre Swift, 13 and 10 for St. Brown, 1,200 yards, 8 touchdowns for Jameson Williams, 1,000 yards, 8 touchdowns for X Factor tight end roll, decent year to DPJ. Defensively, both Rodriguez and Van Der Esch go over 100 tackles, 25 TFLs, 11 and a half sacks for Sean Gary's ridiculous, 9 sacks for LRB, 6 and a half for Sheffield, only 5 and a half for a very disappointing year for Hutchinson. He's Likely not keeping his dev. Five picks for Jeff Akuta, five for Lance Green. He must have been our, our slot corner. Uh, I do want to peep the dev trade of George Cash here real quick. George Cash star, man. It's just it was a little bit of fool. I mean, that's still not bad. He's still like a freak athlete, but you know, would have been way cooler if he was better than a star. And I'm not gonna be a beggar as we still are waiting for the dev trade on mentor here. Because we've you know essentially got two X factors in this draft. But you know, we're not gonna get too too greedy. With the 6'4 guy. Um, Mahomes MVP. We, we I get Just another year that we just don't have award winners. We've been a very good team. We've had some very good players. Uh, well, we'll put a little respect on our kicker. But year three. Um, yeah. Too many interceptions from Jared Goff. Maybe a little worried. That he's at that age where he's just going to start sucking for some inexplicable reason. And we all know and how many times I've gone on a rant that like in the context of Madden, Tom Brady would never exist because old quarterbacks just suck for some reason but uh yeah i gotta forget this year have a good off season and go into year four the cleveland browns win the super bowl 28 14 over seattle weird perfect way to cap off a weird year those guys aren't winning anything uh look at the offense here we did lose the x factor for jared goff which was expected with the amount of interceptions he threw this year which sucks we did lose the x factor for aiden hutchinson which sucks but rashawn gary gained an x factor so you know 12 and one half, six and one half a dozen in the other, as they say. Uh, Mentors Dev got unveiled as a starter. Sean Elliott is up to an X Factor. Happy we were able to land that extension. Jeff Okuda is a superstar now. So, like, all in all, could have been a lot worse. Just sucks because, you know, we have the career redemption of Jared Goff. You don't want him losing a dev trait. For those that, like, like free agency spent, we only have 30 million. I'm not even looking again. I, same deal. We literally have no holes whatsoever on this team this team just underperformed last year i want the money to roll over it's good i don't even want to be tempted with someone that might be flashy you know i just eliminate the window shopping i want that money to roll over so we can keep our good team together next year when it comes to extension time with pick 18 of the draft i literally just kind of gotta go bpa i think i have found the best player in the draft it is marcus cummings all b's in an a in zone coverage for a safety 
the combine elite agility he's you know free yeah you know, we have no holes I, I don't even know if he's gonna play for us ever let's just get the best players we possibly can and i guarantee this guy's gonna be stud all right just let the draft board work off of our you know our big board here and i you know i don't know how strong the draft class was i got kind of average about midway through which you know you got some guys here or there that look solid second round we did get chris shepherd wide receiver out of mississippi State, 75 with uh, the normal depth but look at the first round man just home run i don't you know we're not going to say generational or anything like that but as soon as i saw the a zone coverage for a safety with those athletic traits he already walks in the nfl as the number 15 ranked free safety of course we extended kirby joseph i mean you know there could be room for him to be maybe slot come in play in the slot position right away 83 zone coverage for a rookie is absolutely outstanding for him so uh, we'll probably have to figure out a get, find a way to get him on the field I, i'm also intrigued what is that dev trait going to be better not be a star year three never happened we're now right here in the moment in year four and the team's ready to run it back we didn't need to do any changes because this team is absolutely stacked shouldn't need much we just went ahead and got one of the best players at probably the highest rate i actually should have double checked i wish i wasn't rushing through i was just a bad mood because year three made no sense he might be the best player from the draft last year cummings uh, who is going to be our starting nickel corner this season. Excited to see what he can bring. And please be better than barely above 500 here in year four. Please. Oh, yeah. All right. Midway point of year four. I just got snow just shoveled. Came in. I've been inside for about five minutes. Plow. I don't know if you can hear that. Plow. Right outside. Oh, what a... All right. This is going a lot better than my IRL right now. We are the number three offense, number three defense. Even though our rush defense is pretty poor, we're on the bottom of the league. But we are seven and two. Year three is always weird. That's kind of, you know, we always just got to come down to that. And I am glad we did not spend any money in free agency because we have to spend pretty much all of this $90 million. So special teams is going to probably take a step back for the time being. Van Der Esch, okay, we got to get the young guys here. So we got Kendricks. Uh, Kendrick Hennings, we'll get him on a two-year deal, drafted him. We have Aiden Hutchison, whatever he wants, three years, $44 million. That's actually an absolute bargain, so God bless him for taking that. We have Frank Ragnow, who's not replaceable whatsoever, so offer him three years, $36 million. Really, a reasonable deal as well. Jameson Williams, we got to overpay for. I don't want to even think about him not being on this team. He's a key part of this rebuild of the core guys I want to build around, so we got him. Sheffield, one of our top draft picks early on. Uh, we'll give him a three-year deal, see if he likes that, which he does. A lot of these guys are buying in. Uh, that's kind of what you can do when you are winning. Winning solves a lot of issues. Uh, even if he regresses, he's still going to be a superstar linebacker. That's going to be tough to replace. So we got Van Der Esch. Maybe not the best way to spend that money, but we will do that. Do we keep the special teamers around? Am I going to get Ben Orr? Of course. The punter is the one guy that's not buying it. What about the kicker? You want kicker of the year? What if we give him very player friendly? There we go. That's probably stupid, but whatever. He won kicker of the year. I appreciate that. I respect that. I'll reward that. Even when we win, I find a way to get 14 to 3. We don't get the first round by. Uh, <laughs> we won six in a row down the stretch. Unreal. <sighs> Can't ever, and it's, it's Dallas, of course. Oh my God, do we just do this? Let's just get this. I don't even want to look at anything. Fourteen and three. Dallas is below five hundred. Uh, <laughs> uh, you knew it was gonna happen. You just knew it, right? Oh my God. Um. Well, I mean, yeah, Jared Goff for some reason is just not playing as good as he was before. I don't want to say he's going to lose his superstar off of that year, though. Uh, running offense, a lot of touchdowns. It's almost like we have Jamal Williams back in the backfield. 1,000 yards for St. Brown and Jamison Williams. Very close for a roll. Really good year. I mean, let's be honest. 1,000 yards for a tight end is an outstanding year. Like, anything over 800 yards for, your for a tight end uh, is re really good. Defensively, Rodrigo and Van Der Esch over 100 tackles. 12 and a half sacks for Sean Gary, nine from Sheffield, seven and a half LRB, seven from Hutchinson. Generally, maybe a little lower than I would like to see. And interceptions, I guess acceptable. Yearly awards, MVP goes to Joe Burrow in the NFC. Looking for some Detroit Lion Award winners. Cummings was runner-up. I got to see what that dev trade is. He was runner-up for Defensive Rookie of the Year. 
Uh, we got lineman of the year, Kendrick Hennings. That'd be cool to have like a superstar guard to go along with Suell as our superstar tackle. And let's just keep talking and not acknowledge the fact that we just lost predictably to a below 500 Dallas Cowboy team in the playoffs. Let's see what the dev trade is for. Oh my God, just star dev. The players that we think are going to be good get bad devs, average devs. And then there's players out of nowhere end up either developing or straight up coming out as an X, Fred or X Factor right out the gate. Henning's got Lyman of the year. Let's just see if we got that superstar. Here's his one point upgrade for getting the award. And he is, yes, a superstar dev lineman now. Close of the year, the Bears actually made the Super Bowl. That would come on. What? The Bears made the Super Bowl? Uh, year four, we close with the dev traits of. Dear Goff lost his superstar. I'm still putting that in the thumbnail that he got up to an X Factor, okay? Like, that's the whole point of this rebuild. We we made Goff a thing. Jameson Williams lost his superstar dev. St. Brown lost his X Factor because they're just, our passing offense just fell off a cliff. Defensively, Hutchison is down to a star because, of course, he is. Cummings is up to a superstar. How did he get that? I'll take it. We'll take it. Try to be as unnecessary as we can and try to bring in the top two free agents. Don't even really need them. Don't know if we're going to get them, but we have equaled, in, at least, especially in Cooper Cup's case, the best offers we could possibly lay out. But given how this rebuild's gone, I don't expect... Hey, we got Cooper Cup! Reuniting Jared Goff. All right. All right. Nice. All right, another draft where it's just like, let's grab the best guy. We have no holes. I'm looking at this guy. 6'3", Tremon Wallace at a USC. BBBC. Not amazing. But when you get a guy at 6'3", with elite change of direction, jumping, and speed. Let's see what that's about. And I'm... Can I delete this fucking video? Jesus, man. What? Look at the draft recap. He came 75. Again, I don't know, man. I feel like a guy with those kind of traits and measurables probably should, you know, should, should come with a dev trait. Ah, uh, but he's freaky. He's pretty cool. Pretty good. Pretty fun. Year five. Let's see if we're the best team almost overall in the league again and, and still find a way to disappoint. Uh, the only thing we've done for the offense is went ahead and got Cooper Cup. And we have a new as superstar. That whole right-hand side is the best in the NFL. Defensively, yep, we're ready to be an elite unit yet again. And we'll make Cummings the outright starter with that superstar dev. Uh, there's not much more you could say. If this doesn't work out, the Lions are a cursed Madden franchise. That's the only answer I can come up with if we don't win the Super Bowl this year. At least we got our ticket to the playoffs. Frustrating not have the first seed first round by with 13-4 and four as your record. Um... Was it? Who, take a guess. What do you got? Tampa? <laughs> Just guess. Of course, I could guess that. Tampa, we won seven in a row. Hottest team going into the playoffs. I'm sure we won't be one and done. How did we become one of the top teams? We finish out this rebuild. Jared Goff definitely cooled off a little bit, but still. With the, uh, I don't know what you would call it. I don't want to say it was a handicap, but we had like the, the, it, was, it went hand in hand that we were rebuilding this team and we were also rebuilding Jared Goff. He's, he's been impressive. He's been very good. Uh, decent year from DeAndre Swift. Never a great Cooper Cup. Awesome. Really, obviously, ate into the other receivers, but it, we had to kind of go all in here. Year five, and that's how it happens. Uh, Coming is just huge season. Love seeing that. 20 and a half sacks for Sean Gary. 11 and a half LRB. Nine from Aiden Hutchinson. Four picks for Rodrigo. Leading the team. Very quick look at yearly awards. Of course, the Bucks quarterback, because that's just what happens. For the award winners, we had nothing inside a kicker again. Might have a superstar kicker. Don't be one and done. Like, give me something to be excited about here. Wild card round's not worth going in, getting front row seats for. Yes, sir, Bob. Night, very ugly win. 19 to 14. And we get to go take on the Seattle Seahawks in the division round in this matchup. They got all their points late in this game. Goff was solid. Um, didn't run the ball particularly well. Jameson Williams, I mean, no 100-yard catch. One sack for Ellerby is what it is. Not a pretty game whatsoever, but a playoff win that's been very tough to come by in this video. 
we will take it. So now we're into the divisional round against the 12 win Seattle Seahawks. We'll get front row seats to this one. Let's go. Ford Field playoff game. Does that sound weird? It's going to happen, man. Dan Campbell. I think Dan Campbell's going to bring you guys the greatness, even if they are not giving him an ounce of damn respect in the sim here. We are getting dominated. Absolutely dominated. We we just we kick a field goal. We have an unstoppable offense for the you know the regular season. Top 10. And then of course just make the playoffs. Can't fucking move the ball across the 50. I don't know. Detroit's cursed. They've been a cursed team before. Officially get the, the curse stamp. We'll come in on fourth and four. Yeah, that's what we want to run. A screen pass. Yeah, right. See if we can get a touchdown. Maybe that sparks a chance to get a get a stop. Probably Cooper Cup or Roll. All right. You know, we'll take that. You put uh, your weakest corner on our best guy. We will take a shot play there. Oh, look, we get the stop. Holy. We're in the red zone. We get the go-ahead score. Minute to go. I'm sure they're going to get something. They get the field goal because the Super Sim is so fucking predictable. They get the ball first in overtime. They kick a field goal. We are fourth and five. I'm also recording this right now like as I'm playing. It's in like the preview mode, so there's like a half second delay. Probably should just be straight up playing it. We go back. To Amon Ross St. Brown, wide open. They sold out to protect the sticks. I don't know why they would do that. Look at Jared Goff in the biggest moment. He is absolutely crushing it. What a game from Jared Goff. Staple game from Jared Goff. We kick the field goal. What happened? What? Cursed. Perfect. Cursed. Detroit Lions are cursed. I don't want to be too discouraging, but the fact that, like, you are not, if you are a Detroit Lion fan, within, if salary cap is turned on, you are not building a better team than this. And we weren't even remotely close to being a competitive Super Bowl contender. Cursed. There's nothing you can do. There is no way, shape, or form, unless it's a 1 in 100 type season, are the Detroit Lions winning a Super Bowl? Uh, we at least successfully rebuilt Jared Goff's career. You know, he's starting to slow down a little bit. 50,000 passing yards, 340 touchdowns. That's really respectable numbers. DeAndre Swift was incredibly mid in this rebuild. Maybe I took the wrong running back. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown, 8,500 yards, 57 touchdowns. Almost 6,000 yards. It's a generous roundup, but we'll give it to him. For Jamison Williams, roll was awesome. Did not lose his dev trade at any point in this rebuild, so that was cool. Defensively, Rodrigo, 700 tackles. We got... Uh, Hutchinson was very disappointing, to be honest with you. You expect him to be nuclear. This is a guy that needs to be getting 12, 13, 14, 15 sacks a season. Just never was that guy, unfortunately. Kuda, 18 picks, 13 for Elliott, 11 for Rodrigo, 9 for Joseph. I mean, this, was, this, this rebuild's only missing a Super Bowl. We had... The revival of Jared Goff put the check marks next to it. We drafted some freakishly good players in the draft. Like, this was as authentic and genuine of a, this should be a successful rebuild as you are going to get. We built around the young players they had. We drafted incredibly well. Wasn't like we were trying to fix all our problems in free agency. We signed just year five Super Bowl or bust there in Cooper Cup. And we weren't even sniffing playoff success. I just, it took me an hour. To just come to the determination, the Detroit Lions are cursed. So that will do it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you're first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Let me know in the comment section below what team you want to see next rebuild here in Madden 23. And until next time, it's your boy C4. Say peace out. Love ya. Have a good one. I'm gonna go shovel.